As we kick off the community update, we're going to take you back to last Saturday, February 25th. We're down here at Recreation Park. It's a program called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. And what they do is they make beds for families and children that currently do not have a bed. They are making 40 beds today, 40 for families that need a bed for either their children or themselves. It's a great program. We're going to go inside. We're going to show you so many people volunteering their time. And we're also going to talk with some people as the community update continues. So it's called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. We're going to learn a whole lot more about that program in a moment. Stay with us as the update continues. in Recreation Park on Saturday, February 25th. It's a program called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. Brian, you've been with them for a while. Give us a little background. Tell us more about Sleep in Heavenly Peace and, and what you do. Sure. Sleep in Heavenly Peace is a national nonprofit. There are 300 chapters around the country, 17 in the state of Wisconsin, and we simply build beds and deliver beds to kids who would otherwise be sleeping in unhealthy situations. And you've been involved with them for how many years? I started in 2018, so in next month will be five years for the Wisconsin Portage chapter. All right, you're in Toma today. In a typical year, how many different places do you go around Wisconsin and do this like today? Uh, this is happening probably in uh, 30, 40 locations around the country on this Saturday. In Wisconsin, typically we have a build season that's spring through fall, so we don't do a lot of building uh, in the winter because many of us don't have a nice uh, place like uh, Toma has here. So we are lucky to have this. Um, we will build basically once a month, starting uh, this month through the rest of the year. We'll build three to 400 beds and have them delivered by the end of the year before Christmas. Brian, any idea how many beds you're building today? Any idea how many beds yes. you're making? We're doing 40 beds today. So there will be 40 kids within a month in the Toma area wow. that will have their own bed uh, to sleep in. And for people that are not aware of it, you make all kinds of beds, don't you? Yes. Uh, we've delivered in the Portage about 950 beds in the last five years. Um, and we do it simply by getting the word out. So if you need a bed or you know somebody who needs a bed, they can simply go to www.shpbeds.org. And there's a request a bed link right on there. And if you're in our delivery area, we'll bring you a bed. Any criteria they need to meet, Brian? Any criteria? They need to not be in their own bed in their in a healthy sleeping situation. So that is all the criteria we need to bring them a bed. Well, when Glenn Nelson and I talked about this a while back, we're in a world where I guess you just assume everybody has a bed, but that's not true, is it? It's not, unfortunately, and, and parents do their darndest to put a roof over their head and food on the table, but beds become a luxury. And we've delivered beds to families that have had a, a list of who gets to sleep in the recliner on what night. They're in a nest of their own clothes, many different situations, and, and that's simply what we're trying to do is solve that problem of child bedlessness. Okay, so Brian, sleep in heavenly peace. Is this really Wisconsin only, or this be nationwide? Nationwide. We have 300 chapters across the nation. Wow. Um, it's probably the fastest growing nonprofit in the country. Um, we bring on 25 chapters every quarter, and so we'll have 400 chapters by the end of this year. Brian, as we wrap it up, what would you say to these people behind us that are putting in the time today? What would you say to them? Well, I think that's, we do a great service for the kids. They're going to get a bed that they can sleep in and dream. And when a kid's dreaming, he can, he can think of the future and he can become a better person. But what I think we do just as much for is the community behind us. Yeah. These are 70 people behind us that have no connections to each other that came to give up their Saturday to simply build beds for kids. It's as much about community building as it is about building beds. So is this an annual event? We'll see you back in Toma a year from now? Yes, most likely. Yep, I hope so. Brian, do you ever have a chance to meet maybe some of the people that you're helping? Do you ever have a chance to meet those families? <coughs> 
yes, I, I, we're, we're lucky in, in Portage. We have a few families that come back to every bill that we do. We gave them a bed once, now they come back and they volunteer to give other families a bed. And it's a full circle and that is so heartwarming and why we're here. Thank you, Brian, for making time. The next thing I'm going to do is kind of walk around here and look at the people that are here. Hey, but thank, welcome to Toma. Thank you for making time. Appreciate it. Happy to be here. All right, Pete Whitecar down here. Sleeping heavily peace. Pete, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that you're here. Uh, is Rotary part of this today? Yes, uh, we got a group from Rotary together. Obviously, one of our missions of Rotary is to help make our community a better place. And this organization is fulfilling just an amazing and very much needed benefit to children who don't even have a bed to sleep in. Now, is this the first time you've helped out doing this? Correct. Okay. Why is this so important for Rotary to be a part of this team? Well, it fulfills the, our, not only the mission of Rotary, my personal mission of giving back to the community and making it a better place to grow up and live in our community. Plus, it's also benefiting the children and their families. Sure. Pete, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, so on the update right now, we're down here at Recreation Park on Saturday, February 25th. This program is called Sleep and Heavenly Peace, but basically they're making beds for families and people that do not have beds. They make bunk beds, they make all types of beds, and it's called Sleep and Heavenly Peace. And what we're gonna do right now is walk around and shoot some video of the many people, 70 people that are volunteering their time down here today. We're gonna walk around and look at some video of the people down here. That's what you're seeing at. Park. The program is called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. They're making beds for kids and families without beds today. And you are from the Challenge Academy, right? Yes, sir. Why is it so important for you guys to be out here? Uh, mainly for my future, but uh, I also like helping out the community. When I heard that we are going to Toma Park, I, uh, I assumed we were going to a playground of some sort. Uh -huh. But um, I, didn't, I didn't figure we were making beds. And uh, it's a... Uh, it, but it feels really good. Yeah, it's got to be a good feeling to make something. You know that you're probably never going to meet these people, but it's got to be a great feeling to know you're helping out, doesn't it? Yes, sir. A little background on yourself. Where are you from? I'm from Black River Falls. Okay, so from the area. And there's 24 of you guys out here today. Are you all working together, or how's that working? Uh, we were, yeah, we are. Or I wouldn't say we're, but yes, sir. We're, we're all definitely working together. We all have our moments but in the end we all 
stick together and we get through it. So you had no idea what you were getting into when you came here today, right? Or did you kind of have an idea? I had a vague idea. Okay. Hey, thank you so much. I'll let you get back to work. Thanks for talking with me. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you too, sir. Right, Chris, you've been involved with this for a while, correct? Yes, I have. Let's talk about the businesses behind the scenes that donated stuff to make this all happen. We haven't talked about that yet. Talk about those people for me. So, just before Christmas, when uh, Nelson asked me to contact All American and have them donate materials for the beds, uh, they, they came through with a, a, a lot of material, which is fantastic. Uh, Toma Lumber came forward and handed, gave us some material also. Uh, I believe she contacted Fastenal, who donated the bolts and the hardware for all the beds. You know, with a, a goal of making 100, or excuse me, making 40 beds takes a lot of material, takes a lot of manpower, and uh, it's great that our community is coming forward to help uh, the 40 kids that are going to be receiving beds this weekend. Um, so let's say I show up and I'm part of this today volunteering. I don't have a clue, Chris, how to make a bed. Does somebody walk me through it? Or how does that work? Well, it, it's last year when I uh, first participated in this event, um, it was kind of it was cool to see that all the jigs and fixtures and everything were all set up by a sleep and heavenly piece out of uh, Portage. So really, all we had to do is everything was done. So it was very well like a manufacturing facility, and uh, you know most of the people here. They've never worked in manufacturing, and just using the jigs and being taught a few simple lessons uh, and how to do use the machinery and how to do things, you know, we can produce a really nice product for these kids. Yeah, walking around here looks like everybody knows what they're doing. Yes. Bottom line, Chris, we talked about this off the air. Bottom line is, it's scary to think that there are 40 families and kids right now that don't have beds, that's pretty scary, isn't it? That's, that, that's, and this is just in Monroe County. Right. So, our, our, our kids need to have every advantage possible. They need to have a place that they can call theirs, a, a bed that they can go sit in and sleep in and, and be comfortable in. Um, you know, get a nice, a, a good night's sleep so that when they do come to school, they can be successful students also. Um, talking with Major Garrett from the Challenge Academy, the kids that he brought today, he talked about the fact that they're behind the eight ball from the start. Yeah. And just having a, a bed to call your own, a, a place where you can sleep, that's huge. So what's your role today? What are you doing? What's your role? <laughs> My role is uh, jack of all trades, master okay. of none. I, okay. I, just helping out wherever I can help out. Um, and those are the kinds of people that we want. You know, that, that are helping out here today. Just, what would you say to the people, Chris, that have volunteered their time today? Oh, what would thank you say you. to them? Thank you. As a teacher for 30 years, like I said, every advantage a student can get, uh, every yeah. advantage a kid can get, um, the better off our community is. Um, and, you know, it, it just shows, there's, you know, we'll have another shift of people just like this this afternoon. Okay. Doing these same types of tasks taking them, delivering the beds and getting them out to these kids. It just shows how, you know, our community of, of Monroe County has come together to help. So do you deliver the beds? When do you deliver the beds, Chris? Honestly, I do not know. Okay. But somebody takes care of that. Somebody will take care of that. And do you ever hear from families that maybe have gotten a bed that say, hey, thank you? No, I have not. Um, the, the, another nice thing is, it's not just the building of the beds today. Um, many of the churches from around, our, from around uh, Monroe County They've donated the bed, the bedding, the pillows, yeah, well, the sheets. Well, just talked about that, yes. And, right. and so, it, it's, again, it's truly a community effort. All right, Chris, you said you don't know what you're really doing, so I'll let you get back to that. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Greg.
We're down here at Recreation Park on Saturday, February 25th. The program is called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. People are making beds for people, families that don't have beds right now. And Father Matthew from White Hunt Town joins us. Father, what brings you down here today? Yeah, so um, our confirmation students are required to do some service hours, and I've been meaning to find an opportunity to um, show up and actually help out as well, so as part of the reason. And then also just, for me, I was thinking it's kind of crazy that in a country like ours, there are kids who uh, sleep on the floor still, so I thought it'd be a great way to, to help them out. And you no know, kid sleeps on the floor anymore is a good thing to do. Yeah, that's hard to believe, isn't it? So how many people from the congregation, Father, are down here today? How many people from the, from the church are down here? Yeah, so I counted about a handful of kids, wow. I think about five, and then another five or so uh, adult uh, men have also come down to help out as well. Knights of Columbus have a good show in here today as well. So when, when you came down here, did you, so what's your role today? What, you're making a bed, are you helping make the beds, or what's your role, Father? Yeah, I came and I finally found a place and they gave me a sander and I'm just kind of okay. sanding down where another guy is drilling a hole just to help put it together. So, simple job, I can handle sanding. Little background on yourself for people that have met you like myself. Tell me about yourself. Yeah, my name is Father Matthew Bovey. I was ordained just about eight months ago. Actually, eight months ago to today. Wow. I'm originally from Bloomer, Wisconsin, which is north of Chippewa Falls, and after being in a seminary and school for a while, I was finally ordained and assigned here as the associate pastor, and just trying to get myself uh, acclimated to the community, involved in whatever way I can. And it's been very good so far to be here in Toma. Well, thank you for being a part of this and talking with me, Father. I appreciate it. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you so much. Very welcome. Thank you very much. When you and I talked about a month ago about sleep in heavenly peace, coming to Tome to make beds for children and families that do not have beds, we were hoping for a nice turnout, and boy, you've got a tremendous turnout, including almost 25 from the Challenge Academy. That's correct, Greg, and we had probably at least that many walk-ins today, plus the people that were already registered. So we had probably about 75 right away this morning, which was good because that's the busy time because that's when you have to sand all the all the boards um, and get them ready to be processed down the line. 
I've walked around and I've shot video of all the people that are down here, and it's really, it's really people of all ages, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, we've got some young kids that came with their parents. Um, and the Challenge Academy, of course, are the 16 to 18 year old um, young men from out there. And then um, we actually have somebody from Madison here today with her son that came to visit Grandma and thought this would be a great experience. What does it mean to you, Gwen, to have all these people down here today? What does that mean to you personally? You know, it just really kind of makes my my heart feel good that the community has gathered around this. I know there's a lot going on, um, and we were supposed to be done by 2 o'clock, but I think we're going to be pretty much done by 12. Um, just because the community turned out like this, um, I actually had four carpenters take the wood and cut it yesterday, which was immense help. Um, because it all had to be cut to length, and that was great. So, you know, everybody has just really stepped up to help us with this. Now yeah, we have uh, Toma Rotary, people from Toma Rotary here, Father Matthew from Queen of Apostles is here. So it's really a variety of people, isn't it? Yes, and Walmart Distribution has got quite a few people here, too. Um, I believe they do that as community service out there, and they're always good to have. Okay, so you finished the beds today, and then who takes care of delivering them? Is that on your hands, or how does that work? Um, that will be on my hands, um, and I would ask that anyone who feels that they would like to have one of these beds to uh, go on Sleep in Heavenly Peace, and there should be a link on there where they will be able to um, apply for a bed, and then it'll come through the chapter, and we will look at it. Uh, make sure it is all good, and then we will have a delivery. And usually about three to four people go out for a bed delivery and just watch the smiles on the kids' faces. So the, the Portage chapter, is that basically what's here today? Is that where it all started? Um, yes. Last year we had them come up and do a bed build, and most of the bed, beds went back down to that area. Today the beds will stay in this area for the children and um, young adults uh, in the Monroe County, uh, Juneau County, like Elroy, Kendall, Will, that area down there, uh, New Lisbon, and uh, we will stretch out to Mesita if need be, Sparta, Toma, Will, you know, the whole gamut around us. When you're making 40 beds today, is that a, is that a record? 40 beds? Is that a record? Oh, no. No. Um, the 40 chapter has made well over that um, down in their area, combining with another group. Okay, so next year, same time, same place? Yes, I have the building already booked, and I'm looking forward to doing it again next year. And if we run out of beds, um, with these 40 beds, if we have that many applications, which I certainly do hope that we will have, um, we will do another bed build before next year. This is really a perfect building to do this type of thing, isn't it? Oh my gosh, yes. It's, it's huge. It's got the electricity. It's got the tables. Um, you know, and you can spread out. It's really a perfect venue to do this. Glenn, I'll let you get back to work. Thanks for making time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Greg, and I hope everyone will consider helping us out next year and donating to the Sleep in Heavenly Peace. Thanks for your time. Thank you. So on this portion of the community update, we've been down here at Recreation Park on Saturday morning, February 25th. The program is called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. And today they are making beds for 40 families or children that do not have beds. Over 70 people volunteering their time down here. We got a chance. We want to thank everybody that was nice enough to talk with us. Told the Rotary down here. Queen of Apostles has people down here. Challenge Academy has people down here. But thank you to everybody that was part of this program. Sleep in heavenly peace as they make beds. This past Saturday, February 25th, down at Recreation Park, we hope you enjoyed it.
Crazy update continues. We're down here at Murray's on Main on Monday, February 27th for the 60th annual Toma Chamber Banquet. There are well over 300 people in this room that are here tonight for the 60th annual Toma Chamber Banquet. Part of the banquet is awards, and we'll show you the awards and the award winners. That'll be the next thing you'll see as the Chamber Banquet goes on at Murray's on Main on Monday, February 27th. The awards coming up next on the Hagen Sports Network. At this time, I'd like to invite Mayor Mike Murray to come up and present the Mayor's Award. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for being here. Um, I know Tina already did it, but it's going to be a little selfish on my part. I am blessed with probably the best co-workers. It's like having a family. Um, it works like clockwork when they're here. Uh, Chef Jess, where is Chef Jess? Is she... Heather, is Jess back downstairs? Um, the chocolates, the chocolates that you have on your table, those were made by Chef Jess. You can eat those now, yes. It is dessert time, but only if you're at mom's, you're gonna finish everything on your plate. You don't get dessert until you, until you do that. Um, but just want to uh, shout out to, to the staff. I have an absolutely amazing staff. Um, actually, I hate the word staff. They're co-workers. They're not staff. They're co-workers. It, it, I'm very, very blessed. And I'm an idiot because I didn't bring my cheaters with me. So, <laughs> so I'm going to read from like way back here. Hey, it's a yeah, let me see how I'm doing there. I knew I came for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, this isn't who I... Just kidding. Um, to be honest with you, really, the Mayor's Award is such a tough choice every year because, again, you know, the, the beauty of a small town is the fact that you have this ability to know so many people um, and interact with uh, so many of the same people on, on a continual basis, and you see the people that continually contribute. Um, and, and they do it even in ways that, that they don't realize. Um, and part of that realization is the fact that it's instinctual for them. They don't realize that they're doing the things they're doing because it's just what they do. Um, and this person I have known for many years, um, uh, extremely grateful to have the friendship. Um, really, it's a, a matter of if, if, if anything needs to happen, um, I can make one phone call, they're there. Uh, we actually talked about some things earlier uh, tonight, and, and um, you know whether they'll work out or not, we don't know. But I'll just read what's on here. In recognition of our own Queen Bee, due to her constant willingness to give of herself, Basket Bingo Bridget has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for our community. The city of Toma thanks her deeply for her amazing commitment and drive to make Toma a better place. And with my deepest respect, my dear friend, Dr. Bridget Owens, is getting the mayor's gift. All right, now you gotta collect yourself for a second while I do this, because when we got a red light, we gotta change the batteries. Well, I'm not sure they hear my voice anyway. Uh, oh, I forgot to wear my sparkles. This is so awesome. I have nothing prepared to say. <laughs> I, I'm really speechless, huh, Gage? I know. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> Boy, that, this is pretty cool because uh, just this year I celebrated 30 years of having Active Health Chiropractic Center. I started when I was like, nine and um, so this is really an amazing amazing award to get on a sort of a red letter year for me and I don't know what to say I love Toma I I, I, I just love our community and I love helping out and the phone will ring and Cindy will go go ahead go do it <laughs> so um, thank you thank you Mike You're welcome. oh my goodness Oh, <laughs> 
Fifty-fifty's up to eleven hundred. <laughs> just skinny film? Okay, just a second. Just a second. <laughs> At this time, if I could have Chris Keen please approach the stage. The next award is our board award. This award is presented by the prior year's board chair to a person or persons who have gone above and beyond to help the chamber achieve its mission during his or her term. Chris? Thank you, Tina. I've had the pleasure of serving on the board of directors for the past few years, and during my time I've gotten to know some really great people. When I was asked to select someone to receive this award, I thought it would be a difficult decision, but really there was one person that stood out. This person has served on the chamber board for five terms throughout the years. She has shown dedication, leadership, and has, a, and has provided historical knowledge and sound advice to the chamber for 15 years. It is my honor to present Terry Gorder with this award and thank her for her many years of service to the chamber. Um, thank you. Uh, it's been five times. I didn't know that. It's been a privilege to be on the board and to help guide the chamber into serving our community. So thank you and thank anybody who uh, steps up and gets on the board and helps out our community because it's a great place to live and work. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Terry. Congratulations to both Bridget and Terry. Each year we ask our members to submit names of t people, businesses, and organizations for consideration for the next awards. <clears throat> the next award is something new to our chamber, but one we have not done before, Educator of the Year Award. They say the health of a community, community can be determined by how well the children are taken care of, and I believe we're very blessed here to have thoughtful and dedicated educators in our school district. We wanted to take a moment to put a spotlight on the value of, of those educators in our community. This year's award is going to one of the many educators in Toma who make a difference every day. One reason why Lisa Fritz was chosen to win this award was because of her going above and beyond with one of her students to help get him the eyeglasses he needed to see, taking him to various doctor's appointments, dinners, all on her time off and all out of town so he is in a better position to succeed. Thank you, Lisa, for your time and commitment to our students. Lots of teachers out there every day doing things for students. So I just want to say thank you, but we do it not to be recognized, but to help the kids in our community. Thank you, Lisa. Next up, we have our Military Service Award. It is given to show appreciation to an individual or group showing outstanding military service as appreciated by our chamber members. Tonight's award is going to the American Legion Color Guard Firing Squad. These retired military members take time to display the colors at events such as the Friday night, Friday night at the tractor pull, parades, Memorial and Veterans Day, ceremony, Memorial and Veterans Day ceremonies, and other programs. They also attend many funerals throughout the year, honoring heroes and presenting the families with a memorial flag. Thank you very much. The reason I'm walking with a cane is I had my hip replaced the second time. I broke the first one, that shouldn't have happened. The doctors apologized. <laughs> but I tell you, it was hell. Six weeks in prison. <laughs> in the house, couldn't get out. <laughs> but uh, last year we had 26 military funerals. This year we've had three in January. We had one in February, we got one tomorrow, and we got one Wednesday. And we, we got a pretty good group of fighters, because when I call the commands anymore, all I can hear is one shot. One shot, so they're getting pretty good. <laughs> 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 
I just thought I was going to have to come up here and fill in for Lamont if he couldn't walk up here. He's, he's our fearless leader, and we all believe in the same thing, that no uh, military member should go without a military funeral in the honors. So thank you very much. Thank you. to a chamber ambassador who stands out for going above and beyond and is actively involved with the Chamber of Commerce in the ambassador role. This year's award goes to Martha Klatt. <laughs> Martha has been a chamber ambassador for many years and currently serves on the Chamber Board of Directors. She was integral in setting up the multi-employer 401k program for the Chamber and its members. And she also assists with many ribbon cuttings and many Chamber events. Well, thank you. I'm very surprised and very honored, and I, it, I don't do it by myself. Everybody in this room and all the people listed there for the award, all, you know, we just love what we do and like to make a difference, and so I thank you very much. Thank you, Martha. Our next award is the Toma Chamber Community Service Award. It was created from our belief that special people make for special communities and special organizations. The Community Service Award recognizes those who find the extra time and resources to make a real difference in the community. This year's winner is Blaine and Anna Meyer. No matter what events are going on, the Myers are there supporting the cause. Anna has given of her time volunteering on the chamber board in any capacity needed. They're not afraid to roll up their sleeves and dig in. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm speechless. I, didn't, <laughs> I was not expecting this, but um, thank you. Blaine and I just love this community very much. And any time that there's help needed, we love to step in and help and um, do what we can. So thank you. She's a macaroni. So the day after our banquet last year, we received that nomination and all put it on our calendar so that we would remember it in a year. And we all did. <laughs> Our last award for the evening goes to our Chamber Member of the Year. It was established to recognize the special, mem special members for their support and dedication to our organization. And with over 300 members, there's way too many to contribute to be able to point everyone, else, everyone out. Um, we thank you all for those efforts, and our committee was challenged to select this year's winner. Um, this year's award goes to Treasured Chests. Treasure Chests holds their ladies' night out where they raised tw over 24000 for local breast cancer support. This is done through donations from local businesses and community members of the Toma area. The money stays local to assist those going through breast cancer treatments. They work closely with Gunderson Medical Foundation to allow access to those being treated in the Toma Gunderson Health System with additional support. Thank you so much for this award, but really, um, we couldn't do it without everybody's help um, between businesses, um, individual donors, and all of our fundraising events. Everybody has contributed in this community, and um, it really is, um, it just, it brings uh, tears to my eyes to know how much we've helped women. We have donated. <clears throat> since 2017 
over $46,000 um, to women individually, to our funds that help people through the Gunderson system for um, meals for chemo patients at Toma Health, and our newest, um, our newest thing is we, uh, there's going to be a boutique for um, people that are going through cancer. They're going to have wigs at the Gunderson Cancer Clinic, and so we've donated um, to start that up. So, but that is because of all of you, not just because of us. So really, you guys all deserve the award. So thank you so much. Bridget, do you have a total on the 50-50 split? $1,120. Thanks really goes to our volunteers, but Megan and Berta for putting this event together, so thank you. Okay, go. Our volunteers for this evening were Angie Bauman, Tony Hendry, Wendy Wright, Deb Reed, Diane Zukas, Leslie Guzukas, Sandy Jo Stanek, Greg Hagen, Bridget Owens, and Gage Paris. And I think. Is it you have tickets? Yeah. yeah. Let's go ahead. Oh, yeah. yeah. Put one out of here. Is there anyone in front who did not buy a ticket? I did not buy one. All the cool kids bought tickets. All the cool kids. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, get your tickets out, everyone. 1120 was it? Yeah. Okay. I gotta get my tickets out, too. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Oh. Your ticket ends in 2793. Oh! 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 Let's see your ticket. You are getting Yeah. <laughs> So on this portion of the community update room down here at Murray's on Main on Monday, February 27th for the 60th annual Toma Chamber Banquet, very well attended by well over 300 people and it's kind of thinning out right now as you can see. And what you saw was all the award winners for the 60th annual Toma Chamber Banquet. We hope you enjoyed it here on the update. Again, we've been down here at Murray's on Main this past Monday, February 27th, for the Chamber's 60th Annual Banquet. We hope you enjoyed it. The continues to talk with Mike Hansen down at the school district offices. Mike, we want to talk about some of the items on your school board agenda on Monday, February 20th. 
If you ever walked around Toma High School, there's art everywhere. There is. And art related was a part of your meeting last night, wasn't it? You bet. We had a wonderful meeting last night. One of the highlights of many things were uh, honoring our high school students who took part in the Wisconsin Associated School Board's art exhibit during the um, education conference in uh, Milwaukee just uh, last month. So we had wonderful representatives, three students, uh, uh, putting their work into that and uh, earning awards and I just want to thank Mrs. Winchell, Ms. Burgard and our uh, students at Lynn Steinhoff, Felicia Christensen and uh, Kendall and Greger for their work. Uh, we had students show up last night talk about the work that they did. Uh, it's on our website uh, to sure. view as or well uh, on social media. So uh, just fantastic and so each and every year we have students that uh, earn prestigious awards for that and very excited uh, for the kids to uh, take their work for uh, what was there, about 3,000 people that walked through the uh, conference. Wow. So it's really a tremendous honor. So hats off to the high school and our arts program. It is fantastic. And also part of your meeting last night, Melanie Marshall with the Toma PD. She's been a part of the school district system for many years before you yes. were here, hasn't she? Absolutely. So last night we did have several reports, and one of those was uh, Melanie Marshall, Officer yeah. Marshalls with Toma PD. She's our school resource officer, and you know with um, – our resource officers, they do quite a bit of work. So she discussed the relationship building uh, that they do along with some of the things that they work in tandem with our administrators and teachers on uh, uh, just to ensure the safety uh, and, and security of our students and also building positive relationships everywhere they go. And I just do want to thank our Toma Police Department or our Monroe County Sheriff's Office, all of our first responders. They truly are our partners in so many things. Uh, in relationship building and uh, when when there is need they're absolutely there so that was a, a nice presentation last night and if we jump down on your agenda to finance and operations there's quite a bit you want to yeah, talk about right? uh, absolutely there's a few things we want to point out and our all this information is on our, our website associated with the uh, last night's board meeting so first off the operational referendum we continue to walk mm -hmm. through our uh, informational uh, meetings with those we've been to about uh, 10 11 of our townships and villages and uh, we set a monthly schedule for that so we'll wrap those up in March. We've also been speaking to our faculty at their school buildings and uh, up live now is our website. Uh, we'll be sending out some information to all of our patrons through Infinite Campus and some other publications electronically uh, with information on the referendum. So our website has some information, has a dedicated email address so that if anybody has a question they'd like to ask about the referendum, absolutely send it through there and we'll get that answered for you. There's an FAQ sheet, uh, the fiscal data behind it, the reasons why. Um, in, the net, in the near future, uh, we'll have mailing uh, information that'll come to all of our resident households. In the Toma Area District, we have about 10,000 mailing address addresses so uh, like the Howell normally goes to all of those and we'll have information about the referendum sent through uh, regular mail. Uh, we've got a March 2nd at Robert Cooper Learning Center from 7 to 8 30. It's not so much a presentation just a question and answer time between 7 and 8 30. Uh, patrons can can stop by anytime in, in that time frame and we're going to have different tables set out with specific questions about the referendum so if I came at uh, 745 that night I could spend as much time as I'd like with each of the questions surrounding the referendum and certainly we want to hear those uh, questions that may not be posed there so it's it's not a set piece presentation rather uh, come as you would like to to learn information about the referendum. So a lot of that is coming out. April 4th is the uh, ballot uh, question will be, excuse me, on the April 4th uh, vote day. So I know I also question. talked to Pam Vukta who runs the Senior Center and I know you've had people, I don't, I'm not sure what the day and time is, but she has mentioned as part of a report that there is somebody coming in to talk about yes. the referendum of the senior citizens right. also, Along right? with the information we'll send out electronically in person and other things will go to some civic groups as well. So absolutely. And we want folks to call our office at any time if they have any questions about uh, the operational referendum. Again, that vote is April 4th and we're happy to provide any information a patron would like. 
So is there any stuff under finance and operations we should be touching yeah, on? Yeah, a couple of more items. Annually, we walk through our January enrollment count, and, and uh, Mrs. Clark, our business manager, walks through that. We're, uh, we've got that enrollment count by building uh, associated with our school district website. So we're running about 10 to 15 students uh, more than we were in September, but we're going to in the process of cleaning up those numbers. So uh, in her report last night, it's not... Um, complete right now we're up a little bit but we're trending flat with enrollment based from September to January so that's nice to see and uh, she also presented the annual uh, district free and reduced lunch numbers that information uh, per building is on our website and the average for the district is 50 percent but a lot of that information is out there we highly recommend families to complete the free and reduced uh, lunch documentation as they'd like to um, they, those are always available through uh, food service department Talking with Mike Hansen right now on the update, district administrator, about some of the items on the school board agenda uh, this past Monday, February 20th. Uh, the COVID testing side closed, correct? Right. So in our action items, uh, we are closing our school district uh, testing site. There's just not uh, faculty or students that are, are utilizing that. So we're going to close that, and that space will be available uh, again for our our uh, students and faculty as needed. We want to thank DHS, Department of Health Ser Services, for that opportunity, uh, but at this time uh, we'll be closing that, uh, I believe, effective immediately. So, And also in the very near future, in fact, one coming up this weekend, uh, some trips coming up you talked about. Yes, right? you bet. Also in our action items, uh, we're so proud of uh, our high school students, all of our students throughout the district, but on last night's agenda, there are two trips uh, heading out soon. Uh, members of the high school band will be headed to Dorian College for a, an, an overnight stay, a really prestigious uh, band opportunity for them to be involved in some deep training uh, with uh, peers uh, in the uh, region. And also our Jobs for America's graduates, they're traveling in April to their national conference. We're so honored to have uh, students represented in that program go every year. So uh, the Board of Education approved those. So not much for action items, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, a, a really strong night for presentations. And one other thing I'd like to talk about, uh, one of the highlights of our meeting is the um, gifts uh, to sure, the absolutely. school district absolutely. yeah so this was a, another wonderful uh, board meeting for that uh, we have uh, quite a few uh, gifts to different uh, schools and uh, student organizations loves donated uh, four hundred dollars to our uh, lemon wire elementary 4k classroom uh, the gary s balash excuse me, Blaschke, a donation to Miller Elementary Safety Patrol, $500. Walmart donated to Toma Middle School, the Tito's Table, $300. The Patrick Mulrane donation to Toma Area School District Negative Lunch Accounts, $500. And Mayo Health Clinic System, a donation to uh, the district for mental health navigation, $1,500. Uh, Kindness Community gave several donations to many different organizations to the middle school, $500, the web program. Uh, high school, $500 to the Link Crew. They also provided a donation to the Krejci Fund for $1,000. Uh, the Kindness Community also donated to Inc. Donated to the high school, uh, one of our high school teachers, Amy White, in the amount of $500. They also donated to the DECA program, $500. And from Grassman, uh, Sally Larson sends American Post uh, 201, a baseball donation to our high school baseball program in the amount of $500, Pines Restaurant donation to Warren's Elementary in the amount of $903, and Toma Sports Booster Club, a donation to the Toma High School Girls Golf for their rule sets, $914.95. And then a really important tool for our uh, auto uh, tech program at the high school, an Autel uh, TPMS TS-508 diagnostic and service tool that was donated to Toma High School automotive program by uh, Tony Backus and Superior Automotive, and that tool uh, has a value of uh, $279. So wonderful donations, and you can see the, the breadth of all the programs that are met through those donations. And we want to thank them uh, so much and all of our donors uh, each and every month for what they do. But in general, uh, it's really exciting to see the strong support yeah. Yeah. Uh, for our activities, our athletics, uh, and also our programming in that 4K high school spectrum. So, excellent meeting last night. And if people were not adding the numbers up as you went along, sure. a little over 8,000, correct? Yes, sir, wow. you bet. So, really tremendous evening. 
All right, let's look ahead to March next month. Uh, anything on your agenda right now we should be touching on? You know, on March or into June is, uh, that's a great question. March into June is always preparation for the next year. We've got a few things uh, in the works, and um, you'll see more about um, handbooks, uh, any uh, scheduling changes that need to be made, anything we're putting together for next year, we'll always take to the school board for approval. And, uh, you know, certainly with the April 4th election day coming around, uh, we'll have more information there on the board election and also the referendum. So it'll be a very busy spring. So kind of a slow start to 2023, but it's going to pick up it'll in pick the future, up. right? You got it, Greg. You bet. Mike, thank you for doing this on short notice. Mike Hansen, district administrator, updating us on what went on at their school board meeting on February 20th. Mike and I sit down every month. Again, Mike, I thank you for doing this. Thank you for your time. You bet. A pleasure. Have a great day. Always a community have to continue to down here at the Toma PD on Thursday, March 2nd. A real county crime stopper is going to have a ribbon cutting in a moment. And that's what you'll see next. The ribbon cutting for the Merle County Crime Stoppers on Thursday, March 2nd, as the update continues. Everybody? Yep, I can see everybody. I'm just gonna snap a few photos. Oh, okay. Tighter. 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 All right, I think that's good. All right, okay. then we'll go three, two, one, and you can cut. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Wonderful. And then, the, do you want to say a few words to the group? Yeah, I'll say a few words. Okay. <laughs> I'm the liaison that works with the Toma Chamber, and they've been wonderful to work with, I must say. Uh, Monroe County Crime Stoppers, I've been involved with for a couple years, and I've learned a lot in a couple years. But my, 86. 86. Oh, that's when it started. I started in 1980s, about 1986. And we're trying to revive it, but Monroe County Crime Stoppers basically um, promotes community involvement with law enforcement um, to solve crimes. And there's a lot of a lot of people need to help with that. And we really do want to engage the public and have them become more aware of us as an organization. So, any questions you have? Um, Are you you're funded primarily through donations? Is that we're all yeah we're funded through donations and um, it's a volunteer board. That's made up of community members. Mm -hmm. um, and you meet here, correct? And what are those meetings? We meet, um, we rotate between um, the Toma PD and Monroe County Courthouse and Sparta PD. Oh, okay. We meet once a month on Thursdays, um, the second Thursday of the month at 6 p.m. And we're always looking for people that want to volunteer and be on the board. That would be wonderful. Um, we would. We'd love, we'd love participation. Um, and now you have a fundraiser coming up, We correct? have a big fundraiser coming up March 26th, and it is a tribute to Johnny Cash, and it's by, um, what's his name, uh, Goffey <laughs> is the name of the performer, and it'll be at the Satoma High School at, at doors open at 4.30, and the concert starts at 5 p.m. On March 26th, yeah. Tomorrow. And how would someone purchase tickets? If you want to get tickets, you could go online, um, MonroeCountyCrimeStoppers.com, or you can call for the tickets. Um, there are, the number's on the flyer, but the number's also on our on our website. Um, if you want to get tickets, it's a, a $20 donation. We'll get you one ticket. We're also having a giveaway. If you go on our Facebook page, Monroe County Crime Stoppers of Wisconsin, you can sign up for a giveaway for two tickets. Tickets for two, it's called, and it will be the the drawing for the tickets will be March 9th at our board meeting in Sparta.
Is there anything else you think we should know that I have, maybe haven't covered? You've done really well. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> good group of people to work with, really helping with the, the crimes of the community. If you um, report a crime, you can go to our website to report a crime, Monroe County Crime Stoppers.com. You can go to p3tips.com. You can report by calling the number, and there's two numbers to call. You can call um, the Toma, Toma number, 372-STOP, or Sparta numbers, 269-STOP. Those are anonymous, correct? Those are anonymous calls, and a reward can be um, given if it leads to charges that are filed. Um, so yes, it's anonymous. It's, it's easy. It helps us to solve, cr solve crimes. <laughs> Tome Police Chief Scott Holland, Crime Stoppers, we've been cutting a moment ago. Tome PD, Crime Stoppers, how does it all come together? It's a huge, it's a huge part of the community, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've had a long time partnership uh, with Crime Stoppers. Uh, it's a uh, fantastic organization for us. It allows citizens to um, anonymous, anonymously report crimes uh, uh, to us um, and, and provide information. And, you know, we, we couldn't do our job effectively without information from the public. So um, their names are never are never given. Um, they, uh, they don't have to testify in court. They can just simply provide us information so uh, we, we can uh, look into crime. So for a lot of people that have been hesitant to do this, they really don't need to be, do they? No, not at all. They're, they're, uh, there's no names given, there's no nothing. Everything is completely anonymous. West Rebels as a sheriff, how, Crime Stoppers, how does that come into play as far as Monroe County? As the sheriff from Monroe County goes, how does that come into play for you? Well, in the same manner that it does uh, the other uh, law enforcement agencies in Monroe County. That information that's received, uh, the important part of that is to develop uh, investigative leads and still allow for that individual that's providing the information to be anonymous. That's the important part of that process. Plus, uh, give them a little bit of a reward for doing so. Uh, as of the last uh, few months, there was also a uh, crime prevention board that was uh, established uh, for the purposes of of providing a, a, uh, a fee to those individuals that are convicted of misdemeanors and felonies. And for each one of those uh, convictions, uh, that individual is required to pay $20 per conviction. That, ever, that money is uh, go into a fund which uh, is uh, monitored by the, uh, the clerk of court and the Monroe County Treasurer uh, for the purposes of uh, providing those funds and that decision making to that crime prevention board and crime stoppers will have that opportunity to apply for some of those funds, thus giving them more monies to be able to uh, uh, operate on. Okay, if you had to throw a number out there, Wes, in the last, since you've been sheriff, how many times has Crime Stoppers come into play? Oh, I don't know, uh, Greg, that's, that's pretty hard to tell without going back and looking at their stats. But, uh, um, and standing here right now, uh, unless Chief Holden can come up with something, I couldn't even put my finger on the most important case, but uh, it's always out there. That opportunity is always out there for individuals to uh, provide information so that we can, sure. in essence, uh, do more to keep our, our community safe. But it's a great program. It's been around for a long time, hasn't it? Uh, it has been around for a long, long time, and uh, it's important, uh, an event of this nature, to build upon uh, that uh, past history and then go uh, the program as uh, uh, funding allows uh, to do that. Wes Revels, the Monroe County Sheriff. Wes, thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you, uh, Greg, for being here. All right, Scott, I, I call in. Something's going on suspicious in the city of Toma. I call Monroe County Crime Stoppers. How does that all come together? How does it get to you then? Um, it goes, uh, so the calls come in to uh, the dispatch center, and that information is provided to our investigator, Paul Sloan. So he's the one that coordinates that, and he puts information together, and he follows up. And I know I asked Wes a moment ago, but if he had to throw a number out there? I do know the number. Do you get a lot of feedback yeah. on that? Uh, the, the number, uh, yeah, so we had 144 uh, last year. 144? 144, oh, wow. and so far this year we're at 25. So it is being used, uh, which we greatly appreciate. Uh, there's certainly uh, citizens that have information, and like I said, we, we couldn't do our job effectively if we don't have all the information. We're not everywhere um, at all times, so uh, citizens really help us out. So 144 calls, to me that seems like a big number. Is it a big number to you? 
Um, no, it's not surprising. Generally speaking, uh, the citizens and the community uh, uh, want to help. They want to uh, reduce crime. And uh, no, so, you know, if you do simple math, it's, you know, 12 months. So that's, that's a good number. I, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a worthy organization and we're definitely getting use out of it. Uh, two key things, again, people need to keep in mind. They stay anonymous, correct? Uh, they do. Okay, and is there money involved? Are they paid? There can be. So um, if I understand correctly, uh, if the information that you provide, if that leads to uh, an arrest of somebody, um, I believe you're eligible for a reward up to $1,000. And that, that would be the board that the sheriff was talking about. I believe they make that decision. Scott, kind of, without going into a lot of detail, I know you're probably limited to what you can tell me, but is there a certain reason that people call Crime Stoppers? Is there a certain, if you, if you had to break it down, is there a certain reason? There's a lot of stuff going on, but... Is there a lot more of one thing going on than another, if that makes any sense? Um, no. Um, a, a lot of it is... Uh, what, is, what, is it, what would a typical phone call be? A, a lot of it is drug activity, you know. Uh, so I don't field the call, so I don't know how that conversation correct, correct. is going. Uh, but uh, drug activity is one of them. If there's larger cases, and, you know, we'll put stuff out on Facebook about a retail theft or whatever. People can use that. And the reason why they, they, they like the anonymity of it is, you know, sometimes people fear... Um, for, oh, sure. for repercussions absolutely, and stuff. Absolutely. So, um, and I understand that. Um, so it uh, it allows them uh, to just provide information with no name attached to it, and and, and you know it assists us in uh, moving forward with cases. Scott Holm, Tom PG Chief. Uh, hey, thank you for your time. Appreciate it, Scott. You bet. Have a good one. All right, you were talking earlier about Crime Stoppers, the ribbon coming down to Tacoma PD. You don't do a lot of fundraising, but again, let's reiterate, you have a big fundraiser coming up, don't you? We have a big fundraiser on March 26th at right the Tacoma High School. Right over here. It's a Terry Lee Goffey tribute to Johnny Cash. All right, they're looking in right now. You've already touched on this, but let's reiterate. How do you get tickets? You get tickets by going online to MonroeCountyCrimeStoppers.com. You can buy them online, or you can call the phone number. Um, the phone number here is 608-855-9278. And the tickets will be mailed to you. Um, the doors open at 4.30, and the concert starts at 5 p.m. on Sunday, March 26th, at the Doma High School. And you're also giving away some tickets, right? Right. On our Facebook page, um, you can go to our Facebook page, and there's a short little few questions, three questions for you to answer, and then you get put in a drawing for tickets, tickets for two people, and it, the drawing's March 9th at our board meeting. And your Facebook page, your uh, the, the website to go to to do all this is what? Our website is BurnbrookCountyCrimeStoppers.com, and there's a Facebook link on there, or our Facebook page, our Facebook would be Crime Stoppers of Monroe County, Wisconsin. So they can also go to Facebook? Correct. Yes. Okay, I just talked to Toma Police Chief Scott Holum. He said last year, Crime Stopper related calls, they had 144 calls. Does that number surprise you? No. No. Uh, our P3Tips.com hot tip line is is very active with calls, and we're, we're happy that it is. Where do you find the people that take these calls? Um, the the P3Tips.com, that one's online, and the one, other one would be if you call our hotline number, like 608-372-STOP, that goes into um, a, a special person that's at... It's a special call that comes in. It's not. It's on a non-recorded line, and you remain anonymous. You're giving. You're given a, a number code to use to reference any. Uh, if you get a reward or something, you use a number code. You don't. Your name is never used. You remain anonymous. Yeah, that's the big thing we reiterated with the police chief and the sheriff. You do stay anonymous, correct? Correct. All right. One final thought before we wrap it up. Ribbon cutting today here in Toma, and you have one coming up in Sparta, don't you? Correct. We have one coming up March 14th at noon at the Sparta PD Department. Hey, thank you for talking with me. Appreciate thank your you. time. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, so in this portion of the community update, we're down here at the Toma PD on Thursday, March 2nd. We just saw the ribbon cutting for the Monroe County Crime Stoppers, and we also had a chance to talk with a lot of different people. We want to thank everybody 
that was nice enough to talk with us. Again, we've been down here for the Toma Chamber ribbon cutting for Monroe County Crime Stoppers on Thursday, March 2nd, here on the update. And we hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I